Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Richard, and I'm from the Netherlands, as you can hear, maybe. And welcome to the first episode of the OK Do Academy. Um, short introduction, who am I? Um, I'm one of the persons in the Netherlands who train teachers to use the micro bit. And uh, we already do it for a long time. And uh, basically, the first introduction we had with the micro bit was from Philip. And Philip is my co-host. Let's get him here and let's introduce him. Good afternoon, Philip. Hi, Richard. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. Are you ready for some fun? Oh, yes. Always ready, especially with micro bit. Yeah. And I think we have to introduce everybody to tell them what we're going to do for a couple of weeks. Um, don't expect a flawless technology show. We're not flawless by far. I mean, there will go something wrong, and I can promise you that. It happens in the classroom. It will happen to us, and it's not bad if it happens. Uh, but we really want to get in touch with you, and we really want to know what you already know and what you're already doing with the micro bit. So please send in comments via the chat, put in questions, and we will answer it. Um, Philip. Can you tell us something more about yourself? I know you're a writer of a book. Oh, I, I, I wrote a little book about Microbit. Um, yeah, I've been, I've been around Microbit for a while, since 2015. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the history of Microbit, just, just when we get started. Um, yeah. Before that, I was a maths teacher. I've been a market researcher, a computer programmer, program manager, all sorts of things. It's been an interesting uh, life. but. Uh, most interesting has been my time spent with with microbit um, which has been really super so we'll we'll talk about some of that today hopefully and and in the uh, and in the upcoming lessons as well so, so you were there from the microbit from the very beginning no gosh no no the microbit i mean it started very much in 2012 although you could say that the the idea of the microbit goes back to the uh, to the bbc micro computer and the idea of the microbit initiative was to try and recapture some of that success um, but no no the idea for microbit itself started in 2012 so next year it'll uh, in some respects it'll be 10 years old i um i got involved in 2015 um, okay. i've been involved in different forms uh, ever since then really cool cool should we um just speaking a little bit about the history should i tell you a little bit more about the history of microbit yeah, well, it would be nice to tell us something more. You know, probably more secrets about it than we do. So <laughs> go ahead. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to tell you any of the secrets. Although, uh, who knows? As we go along, maybe, maybe some will slip out. But, um, but no, no, it's fascinating. It's fascinating history. In fact, I've got a picture here, Richard. Can we share that? Yeah, sure. So the idea for Microbit started in 2012, but uh, it took three years before the first prototype that actually looked like a Microbit was developed. Uh, and this is and this is hopefully what you're seeing on screen. It's called Squareboard Two. There is a Squareboard One, but it didn't look much like a microbit. Um, and it was the first prototype that was ever de developed that actually looked like a microbit. It had the same LEDs. It had buttons, and, and you know it's very recognisable. You would know that that was a BBC microbit. Yeah. That was made back in 2015 in Cambridge, and only 36 of those were actually ever made. So if you have one of those in your collection, it's. Uh, it's probably worth a fair bit, to be honest. Um, so, just I show you some more interesting micro bits, Richard? Yeah, tell me more. Yeah, I'm interested. Awesome. All right. Well, you know, the interesting thing is that during 2015, there were about 15 different my, my micro bit prototypes that were made uh, before, you know, the one that um, that we all know and love was released to the public. I've got a few pictures of some of the more interesting ones today, and you know, if if people are interested, we can look at some more in future lessons. The uh, the one on screen now is the second microbit that was ever produced. And was, this one was called the Blackboard. Uh, and there were 60 of those produced. After, after a while, the, the microbit got uh, a bit of a revamp. And what you're looking at now are the boards that were called the Farnell boards. And they had a, a full fringe. So the triangles that you see at the top, they're referred to as the fringe. And originally, yeah. uh, microbit was going to have a full fringe. Obviously, if you take a look at the micro bits in your hands or online at the moment, they've had a bit of a haircut. Um, but the original ones look like that. One of the ugliest micro bits ever made is this one here. This was called the Anon board. We called it that because we didn't really have a, a good name for it. There was only 24 of these were ever made. And most of them were used in testing to destruction. So they were used in situations where they were uh, trying to say what temperature it would 
burn and how cold it would break. So there's not many of those uh, in the market at the moment. So they're really cool. If you've got one of those, well, you won't have one of them. They're extremely rare. There's probably only about- Most of them broke, of course. Most of them broke. A few of them came out to the UK. Um, the BBC have got a few in their special collection, but there's only three people I know of who've actually got those. So uh, nice little uh, curio to have, possibly valuable later on. Um, but that's, so, that, so that was all in 2015. Um, cool. All sorts of different interesting variations. As I said, we could talk more about that in, in later lessons. But obviously, today isn't meant to be a history lesson. It's meant to be, uh, well, a micro bit lesson. So uh, yeah. And We're I, moving I, forward with, with the history. After 2015, once uh, the BBC had finally developed a board that was uh, everything that they needed it to be, they then, of course, gave a million of these out to school children across the UK, year seven. Um, and that very much kick-started uh, a coding revolution in the classrooms. In 2017, the Microbit Education Foundation uh, was formulated. It started off with seven employees and it's grown tremendously. And they've done an absolutely amazing job of curating microbit, looking after it and bringing it to the to the broader world. Now, I think over five million microbits have been sold. Uh, yeah. But the next, perhaps the most significant development in the history of microbit happened last year when OKDo, OK in partnership with the Microbit Foundation and, and a range of other partners as well, uh, developed microbit two, the new microbit. And that's what we're going to be sort of talking around um, today. Yeah. Yeah, because we, we met in 2016, I think. We wanted to start with the microbit. You were still working for the BBC microbit. And I really, really already booked a ferry ticket to come across with a car and pack it up with microbits and go back to Holland. Uh, and then you said, well, wait for a few more months when the, the, the foundation starts. Uh, and then we go international. So the BBC was just for local, for England. And with yeah. the foundation, um, it went international. And yeah. I noticed that the children really like the micro bit because you can get the coding from the computer. And it's uh, one of the magical things is that you can use it. Uh, and you have success within two minutes. I mean, you're the expert, but even I have success in two minutes. <laughs> well, that, that's I, pretty good. I, I'm definitely not an expert, but but I think that's the important thing, Richard. I can do some some fun things with micro bit, not because I'm an expert, but because it is so simple. And it was always designed to be simple. It was designed to be cost effective so that we could put it into the hands of as many uh, learners and school children across the world as possible, not just in wealthy countries, but also in countries, you know, where, where $20 is a significant spend. And it was, it was meant to be uh, the first physical device, single board computer um, that, that people would have experience with. And it was meant to introduce physical computing and computational thinking into, into classrooms, but also to people who just didn't have the skills to use a more complex, uh, yeah a board and it's been an amazing phenomenal success the uh, the growth in microbit has just been amazing and um it's testament to the original thinkers at the bbc back in 2012 who whose plan was to do exactly that so it's been a long-term plan that's uh, has been pulled off by you know the hard labor and and the passion of hundreds maybe thousands of people around the world i'm curious from the people who are watching this live now at the moment um, who is already familiar with the microbit? And can you tell us, are you a student? Are you a parent? Are you a teacher? Or are you a normal adult? Um, let us know who you are. And do you know something of the microbit? So we can come back to you and um, get along with this. Well, I see we've got loads of comments. Uh, so hi, everyone. Sorry, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't looking at the comments. Yeah, was, uh, I see that uh, Rick but, King uh, is on the chat. Uh, I see that Rachel from the Microbit Foundation is here. Wow. Um, Richard Curtin is watching together with Neve. That's nice. Fantastic. Anyone? Well, I was going to I was going to ask Richard if anyone here is from Yorkshire. Uh, shout out to everyone from Yorkshire. I know Richard's based in Yorkshire, so yeah. Hi there. And we have one parent. We've got Nikki on the calls. Also a parent. Kijk, that that's very good. A lot of people. We, we have some some real experts as well. Uh, I know Rachel's um, one of the uh, leaders at the Microbit Foundation, so it's a real pleasure to have you on board. Uh, thanks, Rachel. Uh, Richard, hi, and, and hi to everyone. We'll uh, hopefully be able to answer comments and so on as we go through. Um, yeah, but, but, well, but now we get the good ones. We get a parent with homeschooling for kids, yeah, but we that. also got an old rail worker. We've got a mixed audience, so this oh, is quite cool. Great. Okay. 
Well, what we, what we would, yeah, well, what we want to do is get started today with the micro bit. We want to get started with some small coding. Philip will, will do some explaining about it, and uh, I will click on the buttons, make some mistakes, but we will get there in the end. And you can just watch us. I will share a link with where we where you can find the code so you can reproduce this afterwards. I see even that grandparents are watching now. Cool, good initiative. Um, and to start with, where we go to is basically the microbit.org website. And uh, if we go to that website, you noticed uh, the nice green color, the new microbit logo on front, and a lot of information about it. Now, I'll do a short introduction before I hand it over to Philip and to start with the code, but you can find a lot of information on this website. And um, if we go to the lessons, you can find a lot of lessons which are online, free, available to do. We will come back to this um, next week in the next episode. But today we start with the Let's Code page. And um, we've got the Make Code Editor, we've got the Python Editor, and we've got the Microbit Classroom. The Microbit Classroom is a perfect solution for teachers for doing remote teaching, homeschooling, etc. But we will go into the Make Code Editor. And because the, why the Make Code Editor? Because this is the editor which works on the computer, on the iPad, but also if you download the apps uh, on the bottom, you will also get the same editor with the same blocks. Philip, do you want to say anything extra on this? Well, um, I think you've explained that well, Richard. What I'd like to do is, Thank uh, you. is take a, my pleasure. <laughs> and hi, everyone who's joined. Um, well, I'd like to take a quick look at the microbit itself and uh, just, just chat through some of its capabilities, um, if that's okay. Yep, yeah, sure. Well, uh, I think it's important to uh, to understand what the microbit can do, because if you're thinking about what you're going to do with microbit, you need to know, you know what it's actually capable of. So there's a picture there, thanks to the microbit educational foundation, who I stole it from, showing the new microbit. Uh, some of you may have an old one, some of you may have a new one. Let's just take a, a quick look at what the microbit's actually capable of, what it has on board. So it has a, a nice range of sensors which you can use to investigate things in the environment. Now, this is kind of why we call microbit uh, a physical computer. It's physical because it's able to interact with the environment. It takes measures from the environment and it tells us stuff about the environment. And it does that through a number of different sensors. It has an accelerometer uh, which enables you to measure acceleration in three different planes, which is nice. A magnetometer that similarly measures uh, magnetic fields in different planes and also doubles as a compass, which is incredibly useful. As an onboard temperature sensor, it's able to measure light levels and it's also able to measure sound levels through its microphone. Now it's important to understand this because when you start thinking about the things that it can measure, the, the things in the environment that's able to perceive, then you can start thinking up different ways and different exciting things to do with them. So, for example, you could measure the relative, the, the relationship between the temperature and the light level. As it gets darker, does the temperature increase or decrease? Things like that. You could take a, a micro bit, throw it out a window and measure the acceleration. Don't try that at home, um, but you know, <laughs> you could. Also important to, to microbits to understand the output options. So how can we see what's going on in the microbit? And it's, uh, it has a built-in screen, the five by five matrix, which is adequate for showing letters and numbers, which is great. Uh, it has the capacity to play sounds, and that's been a really fun uh, extension that a lot of people are getting a lot of fun out of. It's part of the new microbit that wasn't present on the old one. It has wireless technology, so you can communicate wirelessly between a microbit and a Bluetooth device, uh, or you can communicate wirelessly between two microbits using the radio. It has input buttons. The microbit 2 has three of them uh, that you can use in your program, and it also has input-output pins. Now, we won't talk much about these at the moment. They're, they're, they're something that we'll, bring in, uh, we'll introduce in later lessons. But the I.O. pins, the input-output pins, uh, create a great deal of opportunities for extending microbit. It also can be portable. It has a portable power supply, and you can also power it via USB. And, of course, the most important element is the microprocessor on board that you can write programs for. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to show you 
how to do that. Just comparing it to the old micro bit, uh, it's it's similar and it's and that's deliberate. The um, the intention was to make sure that it, it's compatible as much as possible, so that people who have an old micro bit can still benefit and use it. Um, so the old micro bit didn't have a microphone; it wasn't able to play sounds. It has a, a, a less powerful implementation of Bluetooth, one less input button, uh, a slightly less powerful microprocessor, and also the power supply was a little bit less, uh, provided a bit less power to your circuits. So with the new micro bit, you get a lot more power to play with, which means you can uh, put a lot more stuff onto your micro bit. So let's actually have a quick chat about that. The, we've, we've just chatted about the uh, capabilities of micro bit and what happens on the micro bit. And there's an awful lot you can do with that. But what's really important is the way that Microbit Educational Foundation have encouraged and nurtured uh, the community. And the community involves teachers, students, makers, and manufacturers. And all these people contribute something to the overall uh, Microbit ecosystem. And one of, the, one of the, the great things is that manufacturers are able to design all sorts of cool and exciting add-ons for the BBC Microbit. So you can power up your micro bit in all sorts of ways. And I'd encourage you to have a look on the OKDo OK website and you'll see all sorts of great uh, manufacturers that offer some really cool stuff uh, that you can power up your micro bit with. Uh, Kitronic, for example, do an amazing uh, bunch of add-ons, one of them called the Kitronic Halo, which we're going to be looking at uh, in the third lesson. Um, X in a box, they've got some super uh, uh, products relating to IoT and memory, which we'll be looking at in lesson four. And uh, uh, I've got to mention Monks Makes. Uh, they just make some really, really cool peripherals as well. But there's loads of others, Seed, F Robot. So have a look on uh, OKDo. Okay have a look at how many great options there are for powering up your micro bit. Um, but, but in the meantime, there's still plenty we can do with the micro bit. And what we're going to look at today is um, it's just stuff that we can do with what's with what's on board. Hey, and Philip. Um, yeah. We also got a good suggestion. If you want to throw it out of the window, uh, use bubble wrap. Bubble wrap for what? Well, I'm throwing, throwing it out. out of the window. <laughs> I, I think that's a great solution. You don't need the fancy stuff. You can use whatever you have at home to create, to build your own creations. Well, this is so, this is one of the things with microbit. It encourages that kind of creativity and that kind of thinking. Um, and, exactly. and it's the simple solutions that are often the best. So that's a great idea. I'll be throwing my mic about the window later. I'll show it next week, but we have done the Steam Cup, a competition in the Netherlands in where the, the children build prototypes. So next week I will show a few of those prototypes. But I think we've talked long enough and we need to do some coding and playing and do some stuff, don't you think? Is it time to do some programming, Richard? I have to work hard now. Well, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait a minute, Richard. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm going back. Yeah, well, if we're going to start programming, that doesn't mean we're going to start writing code now, does it? No. No, no, not ex exactly. Oh. It's okay. said by it's said by some that as much as eighty or ninety percent of programming is actually done in the head. In okay. other words, typing in code is a very important part of the programming process. But before you type a line of code, you need to understand what it is that you're actually trying to achieve. What what is it that we're trying to tell the computer to do? Because if we don't know what we want the computer to do, how are we going to tell it what to do? So before we take a look at make code, let's just have a little think about the program that we're going to write. We can then have a look at make code, get, get familiar with it. But uh, I think we should think about what it is we want to program first. So what we're going to do today is we're going to show you how to program a step counter. Uh, this is a device that you will wear on your body and it will measure how much distance you've traveled, how far you've walked, based on how many steps that you've actually taken. So for us to program that, we need to tell the computer, the micro bit, how to behave as a step counter. Yeah. But before we can tell the micro bit, we, we kind of need to understand ourselves. How, how would we do that? How are we going to make our little micro bit, how are we going to make that into a step counter? Now, the answer to that question, in fact, there's loads of different ways that we could answer that question. But first and foremost, we need to understand the capabilities of the micro bit. And we need to have a look at what it is that's on the micro bit that we could actually use to, uh, to, to create that step counter. So thinking back to all the sensors that are on board, one of the things that we can detect is the light levels, couldn't we? The LEDs on the front here yeah. are able to detect whether it's light or dark. So in theory, Ooh, yeah, 
You could do that. You could make a step counter by putting the micro bit on the bottom of your shoe. And as you walk, each time it goes dark, that would be a step. There are some flaws to that idea, some obvious flaws. For example, walking at night, it wouldn't work. But also, I don't know how long a micro bit will last if you tie it to the bottom of your shoe. So it's a good idea. We'll, we'll throw that one out the window as well, though, I think. <laughs> uh, let's think what else could we do. Sound. Every time you take a step, presumably, unless you're a ninja, you're, you're going to make some kind of a noise. So maybe we could use the sound sensor and detect every time we put our foot down and make our step counter out of that. Yeah. I don't know, though. What happens if you're walking next to someone else or you're walking next to a busy road? Yeah. Too, many, too much sounds. That won't work. That won't work either. So how are we going to build a step counter using microbit? Well, what else have we got? We could think about when you're walking along. You sort of walk along and each time you, you, you lift your foot and you put your foot down and it sort of uh, it, it, it accelerates. Your foot starts and then it's so we're going to look at the accelerator. We're going to use the accelerometer to try and measure um, the number of steps that we take. And we're going to well, Richard, we'll, we'll show you in a second one of the functions that we're going to use. So for us to build a step counter, we're going to use the acceler accelerometer that's on our micro bit. Um, but also before we before we start programming, let's think about what else we need to do. We need to count the number of steps, don't we? So when you start, obviously you start at zero, you take one step, it's one, you take another step, it's two, another step, three, four, five. So we need something that will keep count of the number of steps that we make. Now, this is something that we'll show you in a moment. It's called a variable. And inside programming, inside computer language, when you want to keep track of a number that changes, uh, you do that in something that's called a variable. And, and Richard and I will show you how to use those in, in make code in a little bit. But there's one last thing before we can start writing our program. And that is that we need to actually know how many steps we've taken. So we need a way to get that number, that variable, off of the micro bit and into our brains. We, there's all sorts of options. We could pair our micro bit with a phone. And we could send the data from a micro bit to our phone and look at that data as we walk along. That would be quite nice, actually. Um, but what we're going to use today is we're going to use the screen on the micro bit, the, 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 the five by five LED matrix. And we're going to use that to show how many steps we've taken. So now, now we know what it is we want to program. We're going to program a, a step counter. We're going to use a variable to keep count of how many steps we've taken. We're going to use the screen to show us how many steps we've taken. And we're going to use the accelerometer to tell us when we take a step. So now, Richard, now you can open up. Yeah, I'm allowed. And show can I the buttons now? <laughs> Please do. Thank you. OK, we've got here the screen. I'll shortly explain the, the screen. Um, I start a new project. And I will call it walking. And when I create it, I get to this screen. I've got the menu on top, which I will explain later. I've got a simulation on the left side, so you don't really need a micro bit at this stage to go to, to test it, etc. You do need it uh, later on because you cannot take your laptop walking along the streets. Um, Richard, Richard, yeah. Sorry, I'm not sure that the workspace is showing up. It looks like it's still on the. I did. Now it's better, I think. Oh, by the way, while I've interrupted you, uh, hi, hi to Denmark. Hi, Ole. Nice to have you. Um, Orlando, is it waterproof? Um, well, there's two ways to, to find out. One would be to test it and put it in water. Um, but you've chosen the more sensible option, which is to oh, ask someone. And, no, when, when, it isn't does, waterproof. when Orlando does, can you send us a video? <laughs> yeah, no, it, 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 won't, uh, it won't survive very long in water. But it will survive at very cold temperatures and very high temperatures. It's a it's a very strong and robust um, piece of hardware, but uh, but not waterproof. Yeah, I got a Richard, question. From, Richard's from asked how to get to the editor. Um, yeah. I think Richard, we're going to put a, a number of links in the comments section, aren't we? To uh, yes, to I can do that people. right away. Um, if you go to uh, microbit.org, you will get there. Um, but also, if you go to uh, makecode.microbit.com, um, you will get there as well. But I'll put them in the, the comments later on. OK, now I'm on the right screen. I've got a menu bar on top. On the left side, I've got the simulator. I've got the library with all kinds of blocks. And I've got my work field where I can place all the blocks. And the blocks are nicely placed in English at the moment. 
and they're all collected on the same color. So you can see in the examples, if you need a purple block, I need to go in here. If I need to have a music block, I need to go in here. Well, let, so me, for, let me jump in here, Richard. Me. Yeah. Sorry, just to, just to interrupt. The, the, what, what I think you should look out for while Richard's showing you the blocks is how these blocks link back to the capabilities of the microbit. So, it, so as we mentioned, there's an accelerometer and a screen, and, and these blocks are the things that you use to enable or to use those different elements of the microbit. So, uh, hi, Richard. Yeah. Are we going to make the, the step counter? I think we, I think we should. Uh, we know what we want it to do. So all we're doing now is translating that specification, that idea that we have, and we're translating it, if you like, into computer language. Um, but we're ready. OK. Are you going to tell me and I'm going to click? Let's do that. Sure. All right. So yep. when, we, uh, when we were sort of designing our program, um, we realized that we need a variable. A variable is this thing that we're going to use that will keep track of the number of steps. So Richard's using the variable block to create a variable. Uh, and, when, and we're going to give it a meaningful name. You know, in the old days, they used to call variables X, Y, A, and B, but this is 2021, and we don't need to do that anymore. So Richard's going to call it something like step count or count, something meaningful. So that when we look at our code later, we can read it and understand what we were trying to do. So we've created our variable. That's the one that's going to increase by one every time we take a step, but we need it to start at zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this block here that Richard's just pulled out, we're going to set that variable to be zero, and we've added it into what's called the on start block in make code. Now, what will happen later on, we will put this program onto our microbit. And when our microbit starts up, when we first power it, the first bit of code that it's going to run is the code that's in the on start block. And the first thing, as you can see, that the microbit will do will be to set this variable, the step count, to set it to zero. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Richard. OK, so that's the first part of the code done. Now, the second part's perhaps a little bit more complex. We need to infer when a step has been made. And we've, we've, we've agreed or we spoke about it earlier. We're going to use acceleration. So, Richard, let's have a look at the options we have for the accelerometer. What, what can we actually do with it? Now, what Richard's got there is a block that's called the on shake block. Now, what will happen, your micro bit, whenever you shake it, it creates an acceleration. Obviously, if I shake my micro bit vigorously, it, it'll accelerate in all sorts of different directions. And when the micro bit detects that it's being accelerated in different directions, it, it, it fires off this, this thing called an event. And the event is this on shake block. Now, what that means in practical terms is when your program is running on the micro bit and you shake it, code that we're now going to put into this shake block will execute and it will only execute when we when we shake the micro bit so we're kind of assuming that as we walk along as we place our foot down to take a step we will create enough acceleration that will trigger this event block that will make this code run now we're going to have to test later and see if that actually works but let's let's do that let's put uh, well you've put that code on there thank you richard yeah, so what do we need to do? Every oh, it's, part, not so. just, it's not just a shake, but it's also getting the logo up, turning the logo upside down, putting the screen up, screen upside down. So you can do a lot of different things with the accelerometer. That's quite cool. Well, and, and you know, I mean, later, one, one part of programming, we, we talked about thinking of the program in your head and we, we're typing in the code, but a key part of programming is testing. Now, it might be that this program works better with one of these other options that you've identified there. Yeah. Um, but let's let's leave that for testing. So for now, yeah. we'll just leave it on shake. And when our micro bit shakes, we will then do what, Richard? What are we going to do each I, I, time? I think, I think we have to add a, a step right to our count. So if I go to change step count by one, it would go from zero to one. And if you, yeah, it'll it'll add one each time. So if you if you drop that in there, yeah. And the cool part is, if you, you see the yellow line around the block, if I go closer to the shake button, you will see a yellow line popping up, 
And if I let go of the mouse button, it will click right in. So it clicks right into place. Yeah, super. So each time the micro bit does that, we're going to increase our variable by one. So that's that's fine. We're finished, aren't we? We don't see it, right? We don't see it yet. I mean, that's I can it. shake whatever I want here. I don't have to shake with the computer or with the camera. Yeah. I see a nice shake button in the simulator, and I can click it, but nothing happens. We need some way of telling the person who's using the micro bit how many steps have been taken. We need to to yeah. to to print that variable. We need to output it. And we decided earlier we were going to use the screen at least at least for now. So, Richard, can you show us some of the blocks that are available to us to uh, to print stuff onto the microbit screen? Yeah. There's, there's quite a few cool options, aren't there? Yeah, we can show an icon. Uh, we can do make make our own figure in the LED lights. But we can also show them the text, hello, or Reese. Oh, let, let's do that. I'll put in my name. Maybe that works. Hold on. Please. I shake. Well, Richard, we always said your name would be up in lights one day, and there it is. Yeah, I'm famous now. Okay, but it doesn't work because it doesn't say Reese too. Okay, it's not, next. It's not very, it's not very helpful, is it, for us with our uh, step counter? But uh, you know, did did you know that's my middle name? Not very helpful. <laughs> um, I, I thought you just spelt it wrong, but no, no. <laughs> I'll put yes, in so show number because that would be helpful. Yeah. It's yeah. a number that it's a number that we're counting. The variable yeah. is a number, and that's what we want to show. So we use the show number, and then I think we should show the number of the step count. Yeah. So we've gone into the variable blocks, and because we set up step count earlier as a variable, it's available for us, and we can just drag it and drop it. Now, if, for example, our variable was was not a number, we wouldn't be able to drop it into a show number block. Um, make code's very good at helping you uh, avoid little mistakes like that. So we've written our program. And as you can see, Richard's showing the simulator and he's showing how it works. And to be fair, if you don't have a micro bit, the simulator is a fantastic tool that will allow you to do almost everything that you can do uh, with a micro bit on, you know, in the simulator. So that's really nice and it's very useful. But, do but you if want you to know do have a, I beg your pardon, Richard? Do you want to see really cool stuff? Because we made this within a minute or two minutes. But if you look under the hood, it's JavaScript. So we can switch. And now we've coded basically JavaScript or even this. We have created Python. And we can change some in the code. And we can go back again to the blocks. And we're back to the easy part. Well, I'm glad you, I'm glad you mentioned that, Richard. Because you know what? A lot of people seem to think that block coding isn't real programming and you know i've got a real problem with that because for me programming is taking that idea that's in your head that specification and it's converting it into a language that a computer will understand and block coding is fantastic it's fun to use it's easy to use you don't have to sit there typing all the time which for some people isn't isn't as much fun as just dragging and dropping and it's really powerful you can do some fantastic stuff with with block coding um, but also, as you've just shown, if you want, you can drop, jump over, have a look at the actual long form typed out code. But if you're using make code to write programs, you are a programmer. It's a really, really solid and a great programming platform. And you can get everywhere where you want with just using the blocks. I mean, it doesn't matter what kind of um, uh, accessory you're using or sensor, you can almost everything use the blocks for it to code it. So that's quite cool. A quick question. Um, can you also program it using Chromebooks? I believe you can, yeah. although I see Rachel Rachel online. So Rachel, please jump in and, and contradict me if I'm wrong, but I believe so. Yeah. I think that as long as you've got a browser uh, that runs the internet, obviously. Browser, a USB port, and you're done. And a USB port, yeah. No, I don't have a Chromebook, so I can't say for sure. But if it has those items, then it, it should be fine. And then again, I know it's, it's coming back now, but with the bubble wrap, you can even make it splash proof. I think we're going to have to build something with bubble wrap for our next one, Richard. I think uh, we have to do that, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we, we made this. You can put this on your micro bit uh, by pressing the download button and follow the instructions. Uh, and we basically have the basics of our first program. And of course, everybody can spice this up with your own code because you don't have to do this 
um, the way we created it. You can change it. You can, pu can put um, um, sounds in it, for example, with every step you make. And you have to test it. If you test it, um, uh, you have to go running. If I do a running for 100 steps, how many steps will there be on my counter? You have to do it like five or six or seven or eight times and take the average out of this. Um, so, so you will be out of breath, but you at least know uh, if the microbit is correct or how to correct it with calculations. Well, shall we can... make, shall, oh, shall, shall we make say, another one? A, a, a new application or would you, or do you want to build yeah, a little I, I on think, one? you know, uh, I, I don't know how the kids are, but I'm always quite bored when I'm inside about what to do next. I'm, do I really do want to go play a game or eat an apple or clean my room or, you know, can, if, can someone pick an activity for me? Now, how would you do that then, Richard? If we're going to write a program, I, yeah. I understand I understand the problem, the way you phrased it, but how do we explain that to a computer? Um, well, I think it's a bit like rolling a dice, isn't it? You, tr you roll a die, and if number one is coming out, I have to eat an apple or something like that. By the way, I'm going to put in the comments now the link to the lesson for the step counter, so everybody can go uh, to the website um, for uh, creating the step counter afterwards. Not right now, but afterwards. Um, but yeah, I, I think we need to create something like a dice, and if we roll a dice, then there will be an activity coming out, something like that. Okay, well, in, in computer terms, we refer to, to that as a random number. And uh, computers, most most computer programming languages will allow you to access a randomized number. Yeah. Interest, interesting fact, though, Richard. Um, do you know people talk about computers and how clever they are and artificial intelligence and all that? But do you know there's one thing that humans can do that computers can't do? And do you know what that is? No. Create a genuinely random number. Computers just are really, really bad at random numbers. And what tends to happen in a computer is that those random numbers are actually already pre-programmed. Now, the guys, at, at, well, the people at the, at the BBC Microbit were very clever. They've got a really super randomization uh, algorithm. So the numbers look very, very random. Um, but what we'll do then to, 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 uh, to do your, um, your activity picker is we'll use a random number. So when we'll, we'll ask the Microbit to pick a random number between, I don't know, one and four, one and five to give you yeah, enough like range yeah. of choices. Um, all right, so that's the first. So we'll, so we'll pick a random number uh, between, say, one and five, and then depending on that random number, we will pro suggest a different activity, right? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Ah, but now, before we do that, then we need to phrase this again in a way that a computer can understand it. Okay. So we need to understand the program in our heads before we try and type it in. So we, we're halfway there already. We want to take a random number and then if if that random number is say one mm -hmm. we'll do something if the random number is some is two we'll do something else yeah if the random number is etc cetera, etc cetera. and this is the type of logic that a computer will understand and, and what we'll show you in a second is that it's it's quite straightforward to program computers that will take an if statement if a random number equals one and, and perform an action if that's true. So if the random number is one, we will print out, do your homework, something like that. Yeah. And okay. I think we're ready to, to start doing the coding. Let's go. Let's um, I'm gonna clear my screen, get a new project, call it. Create. Okay, I'm ready. Super. All right. Well, um, first thing I think is is why? How are we going to trigger this? You know, we uh, we want to make a decision. We want to say, hmm, what do I want to do now? And then we want to get our micro bit to tell us what to do. So I think we should use a button click. I think so. I think I like that when you push a button, it will tell you what to do. So if you could show us, Richard, where the the button click yep. options are. It's on input and then on button A pressed, or maybe we can even choose and say button B or A plus B, but let's say button A. Sure, super. All right, so as we saw in the previous example with the micro bit shaking, what will happen is when someone pushes the A button, the code that we put inside this purple block that Rich has just, just put on screen, 
that code will execute. And we've kind of talked about what we want that code to do. So um, we're going to need a variable, I think, Richard. A variable, yep. remember, is a, a will take a different value. And we'll call that random number or something. Yeah, for the activity. For activity. Oh, random. There's, there's no right or wrong answer, as long as it's descriptive in a way that we, we all know what it means. OK. Let's right, do this one. So no. when we click that A button, we would like that value to take on a random number between uh, 1 and 4, 1 and 5. One. I mean, we could make our own lives a bit easier just by making it 3, if you like. 3. I like it easier. Okay. Question there from from Jazz. Hi, Jazz. Um, the I believe the the recording will be available uh, in its entirety afterwards. Yes, it's going to be based on the Facebook uh, site. We'll put okay. a link up, I guess, later. Will we be able to put a link? Oh, it will be on this spot where the live one is later on, so they can watch it back. Right, so we've, we've set our variable to be a random number between, I think that's one and three, but I can't even see on screen. It's too small for me. Yes, it's one, one, two, three. All right, super. So the next part is to say what to do in each of those circumstances. So for that, we're going to use the if then block, which I mentioned a moment ago. Now, what we want to do is we want to put a condition into the if. So if something happens, then do the following. Now, Rich has just shown you how to use the logic block, which is uh, the blocks that are available in the logic on the left. And we're taking out a comparator. So this is going to allow us to compare two things. And when that comparison is true, the code underneath will execute. Do you want to drop that in the, uh, in the, yeah, in the area? Yeah, I, I want to say something really short. This is the part what always goes wrong in trainings with teachers. Because we want to make a sentence like, if random number is one, then. So the normal way what people do is they take the block random number, they put it in, you see the dots, if you let it go, it fits in. Then they take this block and put it in, and then they lose the random number block again, and they, 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 it's quite hard to get it right in. So. What you have to do is first you get this one in, and then you get the random number, and you place it in the first zero. It always goes wrong. So no problem if it happens, just that you know you're doing it wrong if this occurs. OK. We've, we've had an interesting question from Rob. Hi, Rob. Um, you've asked why the maths block is called math. Um, <laughs> I. I I'd say it's probably down to the fact that the um, the team that developed MakeCode are based in the US. And they're a fantastic team, they're a bunch of lovely people. But I, I think that's probably why they refer to it as math rather than maths. I could be wrong. That's my hypothesis. I think you're right. right. Yep. So I, okay, Richard. If random number is one, and then we have to pick an activity. So well, it's, it's, it's number... homework. Let's do homework, if, shall we? Guys, really? Homework? Of course. OK. <laughs> Tidy your room. Homework. Okay. Do some washing. PlayStation. OK, next one. Honestly. Now, there's the, Richard, there's a, there's a few ways that we could uh, that we could carry on here. We could use, I, I don't want to do this, but you could use the plus button at the bottom of the if statement. Do you want to just click that for us? And we could do what's called nested if. So we could write more and more if statements uh, inside the same one. That does get quite complicated. It, it might be more efficient. But you know what? We don't need to do that. Let's keep it as simple as possible for now. So if you close it. So this if statement that Rich has just written, we could just copy and paste the whole if statement. As you'll see in, in uh, MakeCode, it's really easy to, to copy a big block. Now Rich is going to change the, equ the equality element to two change the activity to uh, polish your shoes, cook dinner. Yeah, done. Or something else. <laughs> um, and, and so on and so forth. So we will add in a, a third. We could add in a fourth, a fifth, or a sixth. A micro bit. 
play micro bets. Well, you're going to have to write some games for it first, but uh, it it is possible to write games for micro bet. In fact, can, well, yeah. we'll look at some of that in in later lessons. We can test it this on the left side just by clicking the A button, and it will say play. Oh, I should have made it shorter. <laughs> <laughs> Xbox. Okay, that's a short one. But play PlayStation is going to be a long one. Play. Don't, let's hope it doesn't end up on one, the random number. Ah, oh, another Xbox. Let's do another one. Play. Who's exciting, isn't it? Microbit. Yay. So it's, it's quite easy to, to, to program this. And you basically have to think out loud what you want to do, code it, you can change it, you can put sounds in it. And it's it's quite good to do, basically. It's, it's not that hard to make this. And also for this one, um, we also have the lesson uh, to share. So I will put that one in the comments as well, so you can try this at home. Okay, it's in. And I think these two lessons are enough for this week. What do, what do you think, Philip? We have some questions we can still answer. I must admit, I'd love to, I'd love to go a bit deeper and um, improve the step counter, but perhaps that's a challenge we can we can put to people out there who are watching. Um, yeah, I mean, we've built the, the step counter is so basic and uh, you, you could actually combine the two programs that we've shown. Uh, yeah. and, and come How about up this one? Yeah. Rachel came up with a good idea because she said, how about we make a, make a program to show an emoji to show how you're feeling? Fantastic. That's a super idea. I mean, it's it's uh, what she said, relevant for the Children's Mental Health Week Awareness Week. It could be a nice challenge for people to do at home with help of the parents or teachers or friends. And they can send us a video or um, uh, something else to show us what they have created. And we can show their solutions next week online. Well, that'd be super because not only would that be a really fantastic application, it, it would be doing our job for us and make our lives much easier. So, uh, yeah, shall we help them getting on the way how to do it or how to think about it? I think so. Let, let me first firstly answer a question that Paul Andrew, hi Paul, thanks for joining, has just asked Are there tutorials online? Well, I tell you what, there are tutorials uh, galore. Um, the Microbit Foundation have been building them for, for years and years now, and, and the community of uh, enthusiastic Microbit users as well. Um, so, yes, there's plenty. Uh, get yourself onto the microbit.org we website, follow the links there. You'll find more than enough to get started and, and to go very far with. And, and if that's not enough or if you want something more interesting, get on Google um and and just and just search and you'll find an, a huge wealth of materials that uh, whatever it is you're thinking you're interested in you should find lots of stuff that, that's relevant to that sorry richard back to you I agree. yeah i agree um sh shall we help them getting started with the, the emoji um, challenge i think so let's uh let's, let's work the program out in our heads and then leave it leave it for people to potentially type in code if they're interested yeah. i leave it up to you all right so we want to show an emoji depending on how we feel now the output part of that is something that the micro is very very good at uh, and i think richard we we just looked at it very briefly when you were looking at the display options and there's there's a couple of different ways that you can actually show emojis you can make your own up which is great, or you can use a whole bunch of the pre-programmed ones that are that are already in there. Yeah, so show them quickly where they are. Yeah, go for it. Oh, hold on, wrong button. Um, when I go here into basic, I can go to this one, and I can just create an emoji. Let's do it like this. A button click. So. That's my own. So, but I can, yeah, and I can also pick with button B some already prepared icons. So I can pick which one I want to, to choose so I don't have to make the drawing myself. That's for the lazy people like me. So we could, uh, we could create a, an emoji uh, generator that will show a happy face when you're feeling positive and, and you want to interact and, and be with people. 
possibly. You click the A button and then you click the B button and that will show a sad face. Um, yep. but, but that's a very simple idea. Uh, and there must be some more interesting and exciting ideas. And as they say, if you want an interesting idea, ask a young person and they'll come up with something exciting. So let's leave it out there and see what people um, what people can come up with. It'll be very interesting to, to see what ideas there are. And, you know, we'll, we'll try and show some off next week if, um, if we get anything really good. Yeah, and I think when you're sad or happy, there are also sounds with it. So put a happy melody in it or a sad melody in it and make it spectacular. And make videos, photos, presentations. Um, put it in the in the chat comments of this um, uh, chat or uh, we will, can come up with an email address to put it in. Uh, but I'm sure okay, do will find a way to reach them. Um, and we can maybe have you in the in the live stream next week to so you can explain your own piece of code, how you made it, how you created it, uh, and inspire some of your friends to do this. Don't you think, Philip? I think that's a super idea. Um, I'd love to see that. Do you know, Richard? There's one last thing. I, I uh, we we talked a bit about programming earlier, didn't we? We talked about how a lot of programming is is you know in your head and then. There's the element where you type the code in. We talked about testing as well, and it's a really important part of the process. But with Microbit, there's another there's another uh, dimension to it all that's also really really uh, exciting and lots of fun. And we've touched upon it earlier. So we talked about you know dropping a Microbit out a window. How would you do that? We'd well, wrap it in bubble wrap. But part of physical computing, because that's what we're doing. The Microbit is is a physical computer. Um, is you build things, you, you have a hardware element as well. So in terms of um, our step counter, it's, you know, once you've programmed the code and put it on the micro, but you still got to work out how you're going to carry it around with you. Now, okay, you could get a piece of string or a piece of tape and just tie it to your leg. But there's also uh, a bunch of other things you can do. I mean, you can build 3D enclosures and they're quite fun. Or you could find an old watch strap or you could do something else. Uh, when you're dropping a, a micro bit out of a window or throwing it, you could rub it in, wrap it in bubble wrap, you could embed it in a foam ball. There's all sorts of fun challenges, not only about how to uh, conceive of the programs and how to write them, but then how to build the device at the end and how to come up with a physical device that's actually you can use in the environment to achieve uh, your output. So all sorts of different elements to programming, a lot more than just typing in code. Um, and it's great fun. However you look at it, uh, it, it's a super challenge. And it's not only fun, it's also a really good way to teach your brain to think in, in what, what people call computational thinking, which is the way of solving a problem by working out step by step and simple steps, how to take a really big and complex problem and how to solve it. And this is one of the reasons, besides just the fun factor, it's one of the reasons why you would, you know, get involved in computational, uh, in, in computers and in programming and so on. Thanks. I agree. And it's really easy to show off. <laughs> it's really cool to do. Um, yeah. We would like to know, what would you like to see next week? We've got some ideas, but maybe you've got even better ideas. So we can adjust our program. We can help you with questions or with solutions uh, and otherwise we will amaze you with some um, other activities for next week if you well, don't yes. have micro bit yet you can still start practicing you can still start using the code that we have done uh, today that's quite easy to do if you want to buy a micro bit you can go straight to okay do um, and, and buy one online and probably will it, it will be in time next week, right? I mean, it will take less than a week to get the micro bit in. And then you've got a new micro bit with the speaker and the microphone in it. Um, and we will tell you something more about add-ons on the micro bit. I mean, we can play with lights and with other stuff, but we will show you in the next couple of weeks what you can do with that. But just the micro bit on its own is enough fun to start with. Ah. Uh. Richard, I think that's Neva said. I want something that can move and light up. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm all for that. I want to do some sound next week as well, Richard. Yeah, yeah. Let's do some sound and some light. And um, uh, I agree again with Neve. Um, we have to make something the coming weeks that can move or can light up. Or I think a cookie jar alarm or something, or an alarm <laughs> to put in your closet that if your parents come in your room or in your closet that the alarm will go off. Maybe something like that. 
let's let's see if we get some great ideas from the uh, community we'll we'll do that otherwise uh we've got loads of great ideas ourselves so uh yeah we'll, we'll, we'll come up with something fun that will have lights and sound for sure yeah yeah and i want to thank you philip for this nice uh, entertaining hour um, oh thank you richard for uh fun the same thanks everyone for joining it's uh, it's been great to see comments and so on it um it's really uh, nice to see people getting involved so thank you yeah, and, and thanks and to okay do of course for uh exactly. you know, for giving us this opportunity and for next week invite all your friends grandparents neighbors etc everybody is welcome uh, and let's go over to a thousand viewers that would be nice we are online, so if you have comments, please put them in the in the chat. We will still answer them also, even if the broadcast ends, but we are online. Have fun. Bye-bye, all. Thanks, everyone. Bye.